What's good on YouTube? Y'all know Big Flocker with a convict's perspective. And I'm going to smash, dash, and slide on through that little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel. Hit that bell notification for future fire content. So today, I came across an interesting article this morning. And it was called uh, Gladiators. What is it called? Wait, hold on, guys. California Prison Gladiator Fights Again. This one is a really detailed account of what's been going on in the Department of Corrections. California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. See, there's no rehabilitation nowadays. They just try to add that for good measure. So um, this is going to describe a lot of things of what's been going on, statistics and whatnot, that I think a lot of you guys are going to find very, very interesting, okay? So I'm going to get at you guys in one second. Let me pull up this article real quick. I'm about to go see someone real quick, and then we're out. Let me see. Let's go from here. Here's the article, guys. It's called, it's by the Community Alliance. Okay. And the top heading, it says, multiple re inmates received injuries consistent with weapons being used. A total of eight uncontrolled weapons were discovered. Note, a program lieutenant at Calipatria State Prison concerning a riot between rival gangs involving 30 inmates on November 29th, 2022. Now, this article was written March 1st. It was updated April 1st, 2023. In July 2022, populations inside all California prisons began for forcing by the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitations to intermix across host hostile groups, resulting in dangerous gladiator style fights, which included intentions of severe injury and murder. This is going to get good, guys. I'm telling you guys right now. In April 2022, Connie Gibson, Director of Divisions of Adult Institutions, that is Connie Gibson, Director of the Division of Adults Institutions, framed the new policy as expanding rehabilitative efforts. You guys hear this shit? All persons are required to participate in general population activities under threat of discipline, that is, being placed in higher level housings if person resists the changing to intermixing. So basically, if you refuse to the intermixing, then you're going you're gonna to suffer consequences. In her letter to announce this change from the practice of bifurcating populations, she framed intermixing populations as a long-standing policy, although, although a review of historical actions suggests otherwise. Bifurcating, I don't know what that word means, guys, populations has been a policy on and off at some sites for decades to increase safety and decrease violent assaults. The result of Gibson's implementation of the CDCR's mandate is the context of gladiator style fights, some of which appear, based on our evidence, to be encouraged and are neglected by correction officers will possibly spill over into gang retaliation actions in community settings. Woo! For example, 2018, the Fresno County Sheriff's Office warned of spillover from these prison gladiator fights, citing the potential of an increase in shootings, active violence, and so forth. In 2000, summer of 2022, the, the increase in gladiator-style fights, fights included cases such as men from one population engaging in deadly fights with men from a different population, uh, often with weapons. We have evidence of at least eight cases and hundreds of men involving since September 2022. That's since September 2022. Eight cases. But these repeating fa factors in, uh, involved group-on-group -group violence, weapons used by some, and correctional officers failing to implement practices such as pat-down searches before the groups intermix. Woo! AC, who has a partner inside, said, Last year, my boyfriend was transferred to a prison down south. I started to look into the agenda of the CDCR. I started getting information from the inside. Since August 2022, we know over 20 violent incidents that have occurred. Hence, along with CDCR documents, we are investigating dozens of dates of violence between rival gangs and the Pacific resulting injuries with information provided by those incarcerated across several state prisons and their concerned family members, including Corcoran, Ironwood, California City, Folsom, Pelican Bay, Wasco, and Calipatria. Historical records show that for decades, the CDCR has oscillated between bifurcating and mixing populations at some site. The official's motives for this oscilla oscillation are unknown. I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce that word, guys. Most alarming, however, in 2022 policy that forces all prison sites to intermix populations. It appears that each time the CDCR chooses to mix populations, gladiator fights results. 
hence the bloody and traumatic results of 2022. It is well documented that in the 1990s, mixing of rival groups resulted in violence. It says that UCL Law Review did this, um, as well as other ones, over the Corcoran gladiator fights. During this time of eight years, seven men were shot dead and 43 were wounded. Following the cases of the 1990s, eight correctional officers were exonerated in a federal civil rights trial because the jury believed their alibis. But it was revealed that top CDCR officials implemented the policy of mixing rival groups in prison yards called increment release. And that the policy created that atmosphere for staging fights. See? That's how they justified it. After the courtroom cases, the CDCR policy is policy of mixing rival gangs. The prisons were generally bifurcating hostile groups. I don't know if I'm saying that word right. Excuse me. From 2000 to 2018. In fact, a 2018 Avenal State Prison case involving 12 men who were attacked by about 180 men with weapons for 10 to 15 minutes. In this case, a Southern California attorney has continued to engage in the CDCR with ongoing concerns about the mixing of groups. In early September 22nd, before a major riot at Ironwood, the attorney emphasized that clear and deliberate indifference to a known credible threat of violence was the reality of current CDCR policies. In 2020, CDCR again paused its policy because of the issues that happened in Avenal, because they had several large riots beyond Avenal that ha happened at other locations. Intermixing hostile groups under the guise of accessible rehabilitative program and incremental release. On the September 27, 2022, right, this is about the, the Ironwood incident with the Bulldogs. The report states that over 150 inmates were involved in the riot, ignoring orders to get down and stop fighting. Necessitating the use of force. And in some instances, forces was used to stop imminent loss of life. Some suspects were attempting to murder each other. It is unknown how many men were injured in that, that riot. Another riot broke out in Calipatria Prison on November 29, 2022, in the recreation yard. 16 rival gang members were wearing state issued blue shirts and who were allowed to bypass the correction officer's mandate to do a club body search were set upon. 14 rivals wearing white and gray clothes. These 14 people had been searched for weapons. So what does that mean? That means the fucking CEOs were in on it. That means that they allowed one group to, to attack a particular group. So one side was able to go out there without being searched for weapons, while the other side was searched. That was no, November 29th. Staff used multiple force options to quell the riot. The two groups of inmates ignored orders and continued fighting. Multiple men received cuts, slashes, and puncture wounds that required medical attention. We are investigating another riot between rival gangs that occurred on November 30th at the Corcoran State Prison Substance Abuse Treatment Facility, SADF, in which 12 men were injured. We have documentation of four other fights between rival gangs at Calipatria Recreation Yard even after the riot on November 29th because the prison continues to use increment release and to set up violent confrontations. Woo! The latest incident that we have documented related to program occurred on February 1st when a handcuffed known gang member was attacked by a rival gang member with a weapon while being escorted by guards. Now, that's a cowardice act, man. You're not supposed to do that. So, a rival gang member attacked one with handcuffs. Then again, though, this is probably what could be occurring on that, is that this group may be the one that's being set up all the time, and they finally got access to get someone get backs. They may say, fuck it. I mean, I'm not, I, don't, I don't support it, but... Shit happens, right? Speaking to the issues of programming and incremental release, to my knowledge, the correction officers are setting up gladiator fights because you have all of this unfolding. It's happening again and again. There is no logical explanation besides the staging of gladiator fights. I'm going to keep on going, but I'm going to elaborate on that. That is true because I've had several correctional officers get at me saying that someone's going to fucking die. That they, they are being forced to do this. A lot of officers are against it, but there are those who are, don't, give, don't care. They look at the inmates as just another convict, just another prisoner. And those are the ones you've got to worry about. But there's been several, several officers who have reached out to me from different prisons, man, who have told me this is how we feel about this. And I'm here just to do my 9 to 5 job. I'm not here to get anybody killed. He said, but the policy that Sacramento is pushing on us, someone is going to get killed. I repeat this to Sacramento, all those fucking bureaucrat crack bullshit motherfuckers. Your policies are going to kill somebody. And you guys know it. You guys are going to have blood on your hands. You guys have more blood on your hands for doing things that everybody knows is going to be wrong 
than any other of these groups. Remember that. Okay. AC and a friend who has a brother his side said they have reached out to prison officials, elected leaders, and the governor about the issue to no avail. So once again, the governors, congressmen, all these people, they're not being held accountable for what they're doing. They're putting people's lives and family members at risk. Okay. They say the Fresno Bulldogs classified as a security threat group once you program into general population. Prison officials seem to be making that impossible. Say they, they didn't know that these gang, rival gang confrontations were going to happen. They say they have never been warned. Man, they know. This is what... They knew what was going to happen. See, that's what I said. They should have had these guys in different locations. Maybe you find those that maybe have a little bit of, uh, of say in these groups to be able to conversate before they even did this, man. She shared a TikTok post from a correction officer with us. We are trying to confirm the audio, which appears to suggest that from one of these gladiator fights, six innocent people were stabbed because of prison staff's actions. It was this, as if they came to watch the event and laughed about it. Yeah, I believe it. Over the next few months, we will continue to press process the evidence that was provided to us. Further investigated the details surrounding the CDCR knowingly placing population at risk and danger. They have reached out to leadership and associations to acquire both the permissibility of gladiator fights and the spill out to, to the California communities. So this is coming from California, uh, let me see, Community Alliance. And, um, you know, everything that we kind of said back in, uh, remember last year around April, May and June, we were kind of picking up the mo momentum about what was going to happen, man. Everything ended up happening, man. Um, they've been slowly putting people on certain groups. You know what I'm saying? I can speak of several yards I know of where, and these are level four yards, where they have actives, inact inactives, basically in the same fucking unit. And they don't, I don't know how it's going to happen. You know, um, it's going to be kind of interesting, you know, because a lot of these typical rules are supposed to be a certain way. And it seems like each prison is different and the relationship and alliance is different from prison to prison. You know, um, but these locations, like I said, they're, Intermixing, they're putting people in different locations. I guess there were some different changes with the Bulldogs recently. Um, but I know, I'm, I'm not going to put where people are at, but I know several people I talked to who are on yards where they are not active, right? Well, they're active because they'll get with the business, but the people around them are active. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be an interesting story. And they don't know what to expect. Like San Quentin just recently, I was told, was lost to... Uh, uh, as far as it used to be, it was a this and why uh, guard basically for a minute. And there was a lot of people who were uh, not active. Now that's turned into an active yard. And isn't it happened between the actives and the actives on that yard? I was told. I don't know that's to be facts, but I know that yard did turn over. And apparently there were some communications beforehand where the actives got at the uh, people that were not active on the yard trying to coexist when they got there. Whatever happened, I heard the incident happen. I don't have no proof of it. But I've been told by several people who have confirmed that the yard slipped over. So, this is currently what's going on. You know, um, so the difference between this, excuse me, in the gladiator days of Corcoran in the 90s was those ones were fucking small fucking little yards. You know what I'm saying? To where the most you're going to have out there at one time could be maybe maybe 12 to 20, somewhere in that range, right? And a lot of times they had less than that. They had maybe eight out there. This is a whole fucking yard. This is where you may have fucking... 15 of this and then 50 of this or 150 like they said and 30 over here someone's going to eventually die if this continues man and they've been warned they've had family members reach out all kinds of different stuff but they continue to use these practices so what can we do well you know as as convicts behind the walls they're, and if they're active they're not going to do nothing about it you know what I'm saying now as family members you can reach out to fucking certain lawyers certain community groups you can um you know, write your congressman, you can, uh, you can fucking sit there and uh, protest, all kinds of stuff, man. But I think the main source is going to be through media outlets. The more attention that gets shown on what's going on, the more impact you can have. And I think you also need to find mutual, um, you need to find alliances that, that work for CDC. You got to find people who also are not as afraid to fucking sit there and expose what's going on because... It's going to be more credible when it comes from someone that used to work there than it is from someone whose family members up in there, you know, and a lot of people are afraid, you know, and that's a moral, moral compass question that you have, people have to ask, 
if what they know is going on is wrong and that there's an ulterior motive for what they're doing, someone needs to come forward and expose that. That's my personal feeling. It's the convict's perspective. That said, I'm gone.